you've been good to me. You've been kind. You've been gracious. You've been wonderful. Hallelujah. I refuse to be silent because the joy of the Lord, it is my strength. Amen. Hallelujah. That's my address. That's where I'm going to live. He said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will say of the Lord. Somebody say, I got to say something. I got to say something. I will say of the Lord. What you got to say? He is my refuge. He is my rock. He is my shield. He is my reward. Hallelujah. Glory, yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, sit down if you can. I will about exercise myself. Amen. Praise God forever. Glory be to God. Well, it's family fun day here at Faith yes, Bible Church. Family fun day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There was a crew of us here yesterday setting up tents, and we dug out the grill, and now, it occurred to me we haven't used that grill since I did an NCS event here probably about six years ago. It reflected that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm pleased to report that everything is ready to go. Are you ready to dig in? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, when we're wrapping up here, when we're done in the sanctuary this morning, we're going to head outside and we will have a good time. Amen. Amen. Somebody say good time. Good time. Good time. See, the entomology of good is God. God. Amen. He said where it's good where brethren dwell together in unity for there the Lord suggests a blessing. Amen. Oh, he commands a blessing. Oh, so we're about to get blessed. Amen. Because the Lord commanded one. Yeah. Right, where we dwell together in unity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, uh, last week we started a new series here at Faith Bible Church. The curse is reversed. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. We began to lay groundwork, and we're going to finish laying some of that groundwork today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When the Lord spoke to me about starting Faith Bible Church, one of the things that he spoke to me was that I was to put down pillars in people's lives. Amen. Yeah. That the, the church, according to Timothy, the church is the pillar of truth in the community. Yeah. Amen. And so yeah. we, I knew then I wasn't going to be doing a whole lot of one-off messages. And not that there's anything wrong with one-off messages. I've done them. Amen. But we typically teach and preach in a series here, uh, mostly because uh, the folks that are either watching us online or even the folks that uh, started coming to Faith Bible Church, many of them came out of denominational backgrounds. Amen. Like me. And they had not been exposed to this type of teaching before. Amen. And so we do line upon line. We do precept upon precept. Amen. Aren't you glad? Yes. We go line by line. Amen. Amen. Precept by precept. Amen. And so um, we started this series uh, last week. Amen. And I never know how long series are going to go for. You need to know that. Some of, the, some of the team was writing me this morning about, you know, surprise, here's a new series. <laughs> some, sometimes I don't know. How long they go for? I begin to get a sense when it, when a, a series is wrapping up. How many of you know you can never exhaust the Word of God? That's right. Right. A hundred trillion years from now, you will still be studying the Word of God. Yeah. yeah. Amen. A hundred trillion. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. You'll never get to the end of it. And a yeah. hundred trillion years from now, you'll see something that you never saw before. Phew. Hallelujah. Are you guys doing all right? Are you already, are you already outside doing cornhole? <laughs> Come on back. Listen, turn around, wave to the E Church. Ali, our E family out there, thank you for joining us this morning. But listen, we'd like you to come and join us here at Faith Bible Church. I know that there is a minimum of 100 of you that are checking us out here in the town of Wallingford. I just got the report from Wix. Yep. Amen. As a matter of fact, there's about 86 of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you have a home church, you stay there unless you're not getting fed. Amen. But if you want truth and truth that sets you free, then welcome home. Come join us here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We declare this building is paid and it's full. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, open up your Bible, if you will, to Deuteronomy and the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy is the second law. Amen. It's written by Moses. 
Amen. And it is written originally to the Jews. Right? But you have been grafted in. I have been grafted in. When I became born again, right. when you became born again, you were grafted into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You were grafted into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And you become a, a co-heir with Jesus to everything that he died for in the Bible. Amen. You can try that over here. They're not listening over there this morning. I don't know. When you came into the kingdom, when you accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, you got everything that Jesus purchased on the cross. Amen. Everything that's written in the Old Testament, everything that's written in the New Testament, Jesus purchased all of it. God thought that the word of God was so important that Jesus hung, bled, and died for every word that's in there. That's why we, we put such a premium and place such a high esteem on the word of God. That's right. Amen. That's a good place for you to shout right there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. The Bible is the only collection of writings that is inspired Amen. by God. Amen. There are other writings out there, and they are inspired, but they're not inspired by God. Amen. Amen. Your Bible was written by over 60 different authors over 1,500 years on three different continents. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. It was not set. Somebody did not just sit down one day and say, let me write a Bible. Amen. It was a collection of different writings. And as a matter of fact, the New Testament, after you get through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are eyewitnesses accounts to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you get into the epistles, amen, these were all written to early churches. Yeah. Amen. And they were for instruction and doctrine and uh, for reproof. And for correction, how many of you know the Bible will correct you? Yeah. Right? We don't like to talk about correction. That's why everybody just pulled back. Yeah. <laughs> right? Listen to me. What did Jesus say about sin? Okay. He did. He, he did say repent of it. He did. As a matter of fact, he did not preach uh, peace, love, and the grateful dead. <laughs> he preached repent and come into the kingdom. Well, repent means to turn from. Right. Yeah. What does that mean? The sin that you're committing, right. you're to turn from it. Right. right? You know you're committing sin. Turn from it. Right. Make a decision. Turn from it. And the grace of God will be made available to help you walk free from it. Amen. Hallelujah. We have ministered to several people over the course of these years, especially men. Uh, the Lord has called me to men. Hallelujah. I'm okay with that. That's okay, you ladies on call. Uh, it's, uh, you're called to. I just I'm called to men in particular. Amen. I speak their language, and so uh, many times I'll be ministering to men, young and old, that have gotten caught in pornography. Amen. Or they're caught in alcohol, or they're caught in drugs. Right? Because I came out of all that. Everybody just keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> Halo's all cooking up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what? And, and here's here's why. Because I'm, I've been set free from it, because I know how to get out of it, I'm able to minister to those that are currently caught in it. Amen. And so I would say to men, I would say, listen, when you're watching porn, just say, Lord, thank you for the distaste I have for porn. I don't like it anymore. And they're like, even while I'm watching it? I was like, well, you're going to watch it, right? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't lie. <laughs> right? When you do, Lord, thank you. I am set free from pornography. And I mean, time after time after time, they come to me. Pastor, I'm off. I'm out of it. Amen. God took it away from me. Lord, I haven't had a drink. Pastor, I haven't had a drink in a month. Amen. Pastor, I don't go to the bars anymore. Pastor, I'm not Amen. chasing women anymore. Are you, listen are you listening to me? Yeah. Uh, what, what happens? Yeah. They're engaging in the word of God. Right. Yeah. Amen. They're engaging in what Jesus purchased for them. Right. Amen. Huh. Amen. Their curse has been reversed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. What they got caught in, God set them free from. Right. Amen. Are you there in Deuteronomy? Are you there in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 2? Yeah. Uh -huh. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 2. The Bible says, somebody say the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Somebody say, I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening. listening. The Bible says, when you return to the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. Come on. See, so we don't talk about this in the body of Christ. We don't like to talk about sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? You're supposed to make me feel good about myself. Well, listen, 
if you're feeling good about your sin, there's something wrong with the movie. Yeah. Yeah. If you're saying, it's okay, God understands me, there's something wrong with the movie. Yeah. You know what we've lost? We've lost the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when's the last time you, you watched your favorite it. preacher on television talking about the fear of the Lord? Huh? When's the last time you, you heard your favorite preacher talking about, you got to turn out of your sin? Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, that's what, you see, that's why they stop preaching that way, because people go, turn or burn, right? They, oh, you're, not, you're, you're preaching condemnation. No, 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 I'm preaching you out of hell. Yeah. Right. Amen. No, 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 I'm preaching you out of hell. Listen, yeah. you cannot habitually gauge in, engage in sin. And listen, right. this, this is just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am human just like you. Yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you listening to me? Sometimes pastors, they come off as, you know, well, we're better than you are. <laughs> we struggle with the same stuff. Right. Yeah. And, and by the way, if you're Satan, wouldn't you throw more at the head? Yeah. Yeah, of course you would. Aren't you praying for your pastor? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. 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 That he's protected. How do you pray for your pastor? That he's protected yeah. from the pride of life, the lust yeah. of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. Amen. I know Amen. ministers that were ministering in a, in a certain place, and they got onto the hotel, and Jezebel got on the elevator with them. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And she wanted to know about how much sex they were going to have when they got up to his hotel room. And he physically had a holder against the wall of the elevator <laughs> until he got to his floor, and when the door opened, ran like a bat out of <laughs> Come on. Listen, maybe you didn't know this about Billy Graham. Right? But but newspapers used to plant prostitutes in his rooms, yeah. in his hotel rooms, mm -hmm. so that they could snap a picture. Right? So what did he have to do? He had to start sending people in advance into his room and check all the closets. Right. Are you listening to <laughs> Right? And that was, just to, that was just to discredit him. Satan is always trying to dis discredit yeah. those that are in leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Are you listening to me? Yeah. He's even sitting there right now saying, yeah, he, you believe he said porn this morning. I can't believe he's there. He's working some of you right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why? I have to address these issues. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right? Not only in my own life, but in your life. Yeah. Are you listening to Amen. me? Yeah. Right? If you, if you think it's okay to come in here on a Sunday and in the bar on Monday, there's something wrong with the movie. You've right. missed yeah. it. Right. Yeah. I said, you've missed it. Amen. Yeah. You've missed it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And if you don't hear that, come on, then you'll say, that's oh, okay, God will forgive me. No big deal. The Bible says you're trampling on the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Right? right? I was taught in Teen Challenge, yeah. you keep short accounts with God. Yeah. That's, what, that's the way we describe it. Amen. Keep short accounts with God. Amen. I, when I go to bed at night, many times when I go to bed at night, Lord, forgive me where I failed you today. Forgive me where I fall yeah. short. Oh, forgive me. You know what? I was rebellious today. I, I got into that mood. Oh, let me just talk about me. Yeah, and then, you know what I did, Lord? I let that mood run me. Yeah. Well. I didn't speak to my wife. I didn't speak to your daughter correctly. Mm. You know it. I know it. Forgive me. Amen. What am I doing? Listen, I'm doing this. I'm going after God with all of my heart. Come on, yeah. church. What, what did the Bible say about yeah. David? That he was a man after... God's, God's heart. heart. You're going, yeah, but David, he committed adultery. He had sex with that lady. <laughs> he got her pregnant. <laughs> and then had her husband killed. <laughs> He's a murder. Come on. And then, so here's what we do. We compare his sin to ours. <laughs> well, I'm not that bad. <laughs> you know, what's, a, what's a Budweiser compared to getting a girl pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, God doesn't have a scale like that. That's right. Yeah, come on. That's right. Oh, yeah. He doesn't have a yeah. scale like that. That's right. What hap What happened when the Word of God? How many of you know that Nathan, uh, the Old Testament prophets, are they, they they bring the Word of the Lord? Yep. I said they bring the Word of the Lord, right? And Nathan shows up and says, you know, there was this guy and he had this beautiful sheep and it was the only thing that he had in his whole life. And he loved that sheep and he adored that sheep. And there was this other dude that took his sheep and killed him. What do you think should happen to that dude? Well, that dude should be stoned. That dude should be hung. That dude should be flogged. Come on. And Nathan looked at him and said, you're that guy. You took, come on, 
Bathsheba, and you took him. Come on. Yep. And the Bible says, as a matter of fact, I, I go, you know what? I'm just not in my notes. Let's go ahead. Psalm 51. Go to Psalm 51. We're talking about going after the Lord with all of our heart. Right. Amen. Amen. Here's what David wrote after he sinned with Bathsheba. He said, have mercy on me, God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Come on. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Well, what's transgressions? Sin. Sin. What's iniquity? Sin. Sin. Come on, these aren't trick questions. And cleanse me from my sin. 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 Come on. For I acknowledge my sin. Right. And my sin is always before me. Keep coming. Against you and you only have I sinned. Yeah. This is somebody who's going after God's heart. Yeah. Are you listening to me? And I've done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak. Come on. Right. And blameless when you judge. Next verse, right. please. Behold, I was brought forth in sin, and in sin my mother conceived me. He's yeah. acknowledging I've been a sinner from the beginning. Right. Come on. And you desire truth. Folks, you've heard me say this. If you are not going to be honest with yourself, then there's no way, no how, you're being honest with other people. Right. Yeah. He says here, I, you behold, you desire truth in the end. You listen, you got to, your spirit man's got to tell you the brutal truth. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, and you have to allow right. your spirit man to dictate that brutal truth. And in the hidden part, you will make known to me your wisdom. Hallelujah. Give me one more. Purge me with hyssop, and I'll be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. What happens when God cleanses you of sin? This. Amen. Yeah. When you came into the kingdom of God, when you right. confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, this is what happened. <coughs> Somebody say, <"Whish." laughs> Next one. Make me hear joy and gladness Hallelujah. that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One translation says, create in me a clean heart, yeah. O God, and renew a right spirit within, within me. me. Folks, this is somebody who's going after God's heart. Yeah. I said, this is somebody who's going after God's heart. Amen. Yeah. And that should be our desire as well. Amen. Amen. What did I say? Keep short accounts with God. Listen, we all drop the ball every day. So how dare we judge somebody else? Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, my Bible says in Galatians, when you see someone who is in sin, you're to restore them in the spirit of love and gentleness. Amen. Somebody say, restore them. Restore. Restore. That's what the Amen. church, that, that's what this physical house of worship exists for, mm -hmm. is to get people together that are fundamentally broken, that drop the ball day in and day out yep. to strengthen and encourage each other. It's why James yeah. said, confess your faults one to another. Right? Yeah. Right? right. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah. And some pastors will parenthetically insert, well, you've got to be careful who you tell your, listen, if there's a busy body in the church, point them out. Amen. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is supposed to be the safe house. Right. This is supposed to be yeah. the safe room. That's right. Are yeah. you listening to me? We're, we're amongst family here. Yeah. We don't take family laundry and air it out for other right. people. That's right. right. Amen. But listen to me. As a result of all the prayer that's been going on, don't be uh, surprised when the convicting power of God begins to rest on you as right. you enter into this place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Because revival does not start outside the church. Right. Revival starts in the house. Amen. And revival starts, yes, it does start with prayer. And as a result of prayer, people draw closer to God. And when they draw closer to God, they recognize, I've been hiding the sin from him. And it begins with repentance in the house right. of God. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You want the fire of God to show up here? You want the yeah. glory of the Lord to fall here? Yeah. Listen, repentance is where it starts. Yeah. Amen. Don't shout me out. Listen, I'm giving you the formula. Yeah. 
You take a look at your Bible. This is exactly, you take a look at the Azusa Street Revival. It was a one-eyed black man that said, you know what, let's get together and pray. Yep. William J. Seymour. Yep. Started as a prayer meeting in a house. Grew to so many people. Imagine that, a prayer meeting. <laughs> Grew to so many people. They couldn't fit any more people in the house. Couldn't fit any more people on the front porch of the house. And the whole house one night shifted on its foundation because there were so many people in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when they went around the corner to Azusa Street to a horse barn. Yeah. What? Yeah. And it wasn't William Seymour standing in the pulpit preaching day in and day out. It was William Seymour. His pulpit, by the way, consisted of two apple crates two apple stacked crates. on top of yeah. each other. And that was the pulpit. But you couldn't see him then. Because the bulk of the time he was down on his face behind the pulpit crying out to God. Mm. What would you guys do? <laughs> you came in here on a Sunday and I was behind that pulpit on my face crying out to God. <laughs> Well, let's see, the football game starts pretty soon. <laughs> Wonder, is this going to go on much longer? <laughs> he said he was going to finish early today. <laughs> we'll go down to St. Neal's and pick up some donuts. <laughs> Are you listening to me? What would happen if you came in here on a Friday night for Bible study and all we, all we did was worship God? Yeah. Come on now. Amen. Come on now. What would happen if you actually had to worship God? What, if, what would happen if you had to worship God with no music? Yeah, come on. Oh, there was no worship team. There was no. You just had to sit there in your seat and go, God, I love you. Hallelujah. Lord, created me a clean heart. Amen. Renew a right spirit within yeah. me. Lord, I've been hiding sin from you, and nothing is hidden from you. Go ahead. Lord, I rip open my heart before you. If there's anything yeah. in there, Lord, go ahead and Hallelujah. burn it out. I know there's yeah. things in me you can't use. So, listen, I trust you. Yeah. 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 I trust you. Listen, do you trust him with your soul? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right? Then you can trust him with your spirit, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And there are things that are on the inside of us that he needs to burn out. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. right? Uh, 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 one of, one of the, the uh, epistles talks about how our God, I believe it's the writer of Hebrews, how our God is a consuming fire. Mm. We forget that, that part of God. Mm -hmm. we, we like the, the elderly gentleman who likes to pat us on the head and bless us. <laughs> right? But listen to me. If Timothy, the Holy Spirit writing to Timothy, he said, some are vessels, gold and silver and wood, some are vessels unto honor. Right? My prayer for uh, over a decade was Holy Spirit mold and guide and shape me into a vessel of honor. That I would be effective and I would be useful in the Master's hands. That I would be useful in advancing your kingdom. Why? Because there's things that I say and there's things that I do. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love you. Just keep your eye. Keep looking straight ahead. Right? I'm talking about being brutally honest with yourself. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, judge yourself so that you don't get judged. Right? right? And sometimes, not all the time, sometimes... We take a look at the prosperity message and we go, well, listen, as long as God is blessing me financially, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. As you begin to climb the rungs of wealth, and by the way, God wants you wealthy. The, the Bible says that the Lord delights Amen. in the prosperity of his yep. servant. He doesn't yeah. want you broke and tore up. He wants you blessed. He wants you. Come on. His favors. He wants all of those things for you. But if you are so blessed financially that you forget the Lord your God, yeah, that's true. Hallelujah. When you take a look at these ones that, that uh, uh, God has raised up, when you take a look at uh, these so-called prosperity preachers that are out there, the man who trained me for ministry was the father of the Word of Faith movement. Yeah. Brother Kenneth Hagin. Amen. Amen. And he was preaching prosperity with holes in his shoes, and finally his car, he had to sell it for junk. <laughs> it just the car would not run anymore, and he was preaching on prosperity, how God wants you prosperous. Are you listening to me, church? Yeah. Deuteronomy, I believe, is chapter eight, says, 
when you have built for yourselves, when you've gone into the land of promises, somebody say, when I got born again. Yeah. When you go into the land of promises, when you go into the promised land, and you have built for yourselves fine homes. I believe it's Deuteronomy chapter 8. You built for yourself fine homes. Did you homes. Homes. Plural. Amen. Homes. When you have built for yourself fine homes, and your gold is multiplied, and your silver is multiplied, and your camels have multiplied, and everything you have has multiplied, don't forget the Lord your God. Amen. That's right. So why is he belaboring this point? Because what you may be not connecting the dot on is that David was king of Israel when he wrote this. Mm. He had already reached the pinnacle. He had reached the top. And he allowed reaching the top, reaching the pinnacle, to begin to govern what he was thinking, what he was saying, or what he was doing. Mm. To the point where he's like, oh, she looks fine. I think I'd like to hang out with her for a while. I've heard preachers try to twist this up. Well, what was she doing up there on the rooftop? And she was doing just that. She was up on the rooftop bathing. <laughs> she yeah. was having a bath. She was minding her own business. <laughs> the question I have for you is, if David knew that she was up there, what was he doing up there? <laughs> yeah, come on, Pastor. Come on now. Yeah. Right? Maybe you need to ask yourself this question. What am I doing at this bar stool? Well, uh, no, no, I said, listen, Pastor, it's just a little weed. It's not a lot. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. When we begin to rise up, when, we, when, when God begins to bless us, right, we don't teach the danger side of prosperity. We're talking about the curse being reversed. Yeah. Well, poverty and lack is the curse. When God reverses that in your life and you begin to gain in wealth and gain in success, don't forget the Lord your God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Keep short accounts. Right. He was king of Israel. Mm -hmm. right. What he said, God, I have sinned against you and you alone. Create in me a clean heart. Yeah. There are things in me, Lord, that only you know about. When I began preparing for this, God showed this to me, and you've heard me say this from the pulpit, because I don't, I don't just get messages or series overnight it takes time it takes time for the holy spirit to get it through me and i don't make that as a negative confession but he's got to get through right. yeah <laughs> yeah just keep looking straight ahead yeah. Yeah. right <laughs> and and as i as i hadn't even started preparing for this one one sunday here it came out of my mouth there are things about me that god knows that cindy doesn't there are things that God knows about Cindy that I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's only between you and God. And because it's a secret between you and God, well, you know what, God? I'm going to try to keep it from you, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? And because everybody sees me in my Sunday, my hair, yeah, come on. my lipstick, and... No, 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 my lipstick, you get me right. <laughs> And, and I, I got all my finery on. Everybody sees me on Sunday. Oh, praise the Lord and hallelujah. And stop me high five for Jesus. No, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> and isn't God, you know, and feel, hey, how you doing? Oh, praise the Lord, everything's good. Yeah, but I'm trapped in pornography. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Listen, I've been out drinking. You know, the secretary at work, she's looking better and better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody just keep looking straight ahead. <laughs> These are real life issues. You know what? My marriage is struggling. I'm struggling with my kids. You know, if, if somebody doesn't do something about this dog, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> 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 uh, actually, actually, not anymore. No, no, we're not fine tonight. So, Gary, I was telling, I was telling somebody this morning, you know, I was eating cheese doodles last night. Yes, I'll tell on myself. I was eating cheese doodles and I was watching Notre Dame football. <laughs> Sitting there on the couch eating cheese doodles. And here's this 140 pound Rottweiler right here. Are you going to share those? You know, I like cheese doodles too. <laughs> oh, hey, let me add something to that. <laughs> Ah, uh, really? Really? Here, you can have that one. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it. You see, I, I have to use a little humor. Open your spirits up. Right? This should not be a tough pill to swallow. Amen. And I wasn't expecting a lot of shouting and running for this message. But listen to me, church. And you listen to me out there, too. And all of you preachers who know me, and all of you folks out there that watch us, if you're going to teach about prosperity and how God wants people prosperous, please do so. But if you will not teach the danger side of prosperity, shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. We have to have people that are matured. Right. Amen. By the word of God. Yeah. And tempered by time and circumstance. Tempered by God himself to handle the wealth that's coming into the right. body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Everyone talks about this because the scriptures are very clear. That there's an end time transfer of wealth. Yeah. Amen. And that transfer is going on right now. The only question is, will you get in on it? Right. right? And once you do get in on it, can God count on you? To do the right things Amen. with that wealth right. when you get entrusted right. with it. Yeah. Right? What do I mean by that? This is Jesus speaking. I said, somebody say Jesus. 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 So listen to the master. If you're faithful with little, right. yeah. you'll be faithful with much. Amen. Well, you know, when I get a million dollars is when I'll begin to tithe. If you're faithful with little. Yeah. You'll be faithful with much. What's my encouragement? Be faithful with the dollar. God will trust you with millions. Right. Be yeah. faithful with the millions, and God will trust you with billions. And listen yeah. to me, church. We need to go beyond being billionaires. Right. Yeah. This gospel must be preached all over the earth. Right. There is poor and needy all right. over the earth. Right? Yeah. Uh, 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 Patty Akui <laughs> down there in Fiji, they have 53 students that need to be sponsored. Let's just say it's $1,000. $53,000 is very small money. Mm -hmm. yep. Very small money. Yes. It's, 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 uh, it's not even navel lint in God's kingdom. Right. Right. Very small money. Amen. I dare one of you to stretch your faith out and say, Lord, send me $53,000 and I'll send it. Yeah. What? Wait a minute. If I get 53 grand, I'm not even going to talk to you. <laughs> right? Are you listening to me? We're talking about your heart condition. The soil of your heart. If your heart is stony, you're disqualified. If your heart is hard, you're disqualified. Are you listening to me? And listen. And here's what Jesus said. So they say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Jesus said, when he was teaching on the soil, he said, some of you are good soil but the cares of life yeah. and the deceitfulness of riches right. choke out the life of the word of God yeah, right. you're like oh pastor I need $53,000 for my own bills believe God for $53,000 for his kingdom right. and he'll see to it that you are overflowed in this arena right. 30, 60, Amen. Amen. 100 Amen. 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 I've seen it I've done it. We're in a building as a direct result of that. Yeah. Amen. There's a minister that we know that has mentored me for years. He doesn't know it, but I love this man with all my heart. Amen. Because he teaches me. Yeah. And he was building out a new church down in Sarasota, Florida, and they were looking uh, for, uh, I forget the number, but they were um, selling the seats of the church for $2,000, right, per seat, and that would pay the building off. I said, like, well, that's genius. Right? You take the number of seats you have, and here's how much money we have, and you divide it by that, and this is how much money we need to pay the building off. Right? And so I said, Lord, send me the $2,000, and I know exactly where to send it. Hmm. Know exactly where to send it. Matter of fact, I was on the interchange over here at 691, coming on to 91 when I said that to him. And two days later, a man showed up at our front door. Am I right? I was sitting in my chair drinking tea. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What cheese to look at tea. <laughs> <laughs> And I opened up the door, greeted him. He said, the Lord told me to give this to you and handed me a check for $2,000. Yes. So I took Cindy out to the finest. <laughs> we knew exactly what we were going to do with that money. Right. Right? And because we sold into that building, yeah. we reaped our own. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. This is how it works in the kingdom. 
Amen? So he says in Deuteronomy, in the 30th chapter and the second verse, he says, turn to the Lord your God and obey him with your whole mind and being just as I am commanding you today and the Lord. Somebody say there's a qualifier. There is. There's a qualifier. He says, turn to God with all of your heart. Yeah. And then he'll reverse Amen. your captivity. Amen. Some of you are in financial bondage and a financial seed is the way out of it. Some of you have health challenges and your way out of it is leaving out of your and so one of your I remember when the doctor stood in front of me and said, Listen, James, what you have is, is incurable. We don't know what's causing it. So here's some medicine and you just go ahead and take that medicine and good luck. You yeah. listening to me? So what did I start doing? Well, I'd already done that. Right? I'm already speaking the word of God. Crazy. I'm doing that. You see, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. Come on, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. This is this is real world stuff. You stay with me now. You ready? Here's what I here's what I was here's what I continued to do and started to do more of. I began to preach more. I began to teach more. Yeah. When I was standing yeah. in front of people in business meetings, I began to tell them about Jesus more. I began to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Right? What am I doing? Listen, God, you take care of this. You take. Right. They, they called it vertigo, unknown etiology. They didn't know why I was dizzy all the time. They didn't know why I was in the men's room throwing up two or three times a day. They didn't know why I had to grab onto furniture to stand. They didn't know how it was that I was driving down the road with one eye. Because like, are you listening to me? Yeah. I kept doing what I was doing. Yeah. To advance the kingdom of God. All right, and my mindset and my heart set was this. Are you listening to me, church? Yeah. Listen, yeah. devil, I'm going to keep poking you in the eye with this finger. <laughs> right? You have, you have focused your attention on me. You have tried to take me out. You've tried to take me out. You've tried to take the call of God off of Come on. You're trying to make me sit down be quiet every chance I get. Every chance I get, I'm going to poke you in the eye. I'm going to yes. preach this gospel. I don't care if it's a person on the corner. I don't care if I'm in the boardroom of the, the top uh, Fortune 50 company in the United States of America. I'm going to tell people about Jesus everywhere I go. And if you keep it up, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to do more of it. Amen. <laughs> we began going around, listen to me, we began going around getting people healed. Yeah. Amen. Right? I'm in, in, in 240 Trouble Street in downtown Hartford, and we laid our hands on a young lady, and God instantly healed her. Amen. Right? I'm in, I'm in the boardroom of the CEO of Connecticut Natural Gas, we lay our hands on him, and God heals him. Yeah. Are you listening yeah. to me? Yeah. We have people, get, their marriages are getting restored at work. We had a young lady that came in to go to work for us, and she got strung out on crack cocaine, and we got her born again. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then she moved, and she went up to the other side of Connecticut, and the last message I got, she had uh, given birth to a child who was in a church and serving God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. We just kept advancing the kingdom, yeah. engage in the kingdom. You don't understand. I understand Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen, you're going to push me into this fire. God is able to deliver me. Yeah. Yes, he is. Right? You just watch as I walk through the middle of this fire. Right? And one day I was standing at the cabinet going to take those supplements again. Because, you know, go to the naturopathic doctor because they're, you know, the, the regular MD, they've got medicine, but the medicine wasn't touching what I got. Mm -hmm. Right? Went to a naturopathic doctor. And he's like, listen, your adrenaline glands are exhausted. So here, take these supplements. Right? I'm taking, listen, I'm faithful. Right? I'm taking the supplements, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. At least I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm good. Right? And then one day I reached, I was going to reach up for the supplements again. I said, you know what? If I'm not healed by now, you hear me, church? Yep. I know Amen. God has healed me. Amen. My, my adrenaline, they're, they're healed. Yep. This vertigo, it's gone in the name yeah. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's healed. Amen. Stop taking the supplements. It took probably about three days for me to realize I was no longer holding on to furniture. Right. Yeah. Amen. Standing. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right? I couldn't yeah. do this. Folks, I couldn't do this. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Right? And every now and then when I work too hard, <laughs> every now and then, almost every week, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's under the surface. Yeah. Right? So in my, my, in my everyday life, right, I, I'm not experiencing it. But if I split wood, 
come on, or if I work, or I work really hard physically, I begin to know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, three weeks ago I started yeah. addressing it. Yeah. Oh no, 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 completely, totally. Are you listening to me, yeah, church? Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Hey, God, if there are things in my heart, if there's things, in, if there's things right. you can't, you know what? Here right. you go. Here you go, burn it all out, take it out, take that wrong motive, take that wrong attitude. Go ahead, take it all, Lord, burn it out. Why? I want to be useful in the kingdom yeah. of God. I want to be discredited. I want to be disqualified. Amen. Yeah. He said, when you turn to the Lord with all your heart, your yeah. captivity is turned. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Here, let me show you something. None of that was in my notes. <laughs> the first sentence was in my notes. This was out of my spirit Amen. for you today. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Start. Don't, listen. Don't wait until you have the resources. Don't wait until you feel better. Come on. Get out there and start doing the work. Yeah. of the ministry. Yeah. Talk to your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Talk to them. About, advance the kingdom of God. Right. right? And as you go, you'll be like those, those lepers. As they went, right. they were healed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But listen, don't be like those nine after they got healed. Yeah, come on. Be the one, be the one. that comes back and says, hey, Jesus, thank you. Yeah. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this, right? Because this, there's an anointing on this. Jesus expected to be thanked. Yeah. Just think about that. Mm -hmm. He said, wasn't there nine mm -hmm. that were healed? Yeah. 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 Oh, there was yeah. ten. One came back. But only one of you came yep. back to say, thank you. thank you. So as you're going and doing, Somebody say, going and doing. Going and doing. The first two letters of God's name is go. Mm -hmm. Last two letters reversed is do. As you're going and doing, yeah. as you're advancing the kingdom, you'll find that God is reversed. Saying yeah. whatever it is yeah. Satan's been putting on you. Yeah. But don't Amen. forget to thank when you find yourself free. When your body is healed, right. the bank account is overflowing and there's nine zeros in there. Oh, I, got, I got two of you shaking your head yes. Yeah. <laughs> Receive that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Nine zeros. And you're advancing the kingdom. You're funding orphanages. Come on. You're doing homeless shell. Come, you're doing you're advancing the kingdom by preaching the gospel. Amen. Don't forget to thank you. Yeah. Amen. Stand your feet Father, thank you for your holy written word. Thank you for these group of believers that you gathered here this morning. Lord, I speak your best.